All right, well, we have a special treat for you today. As Josh mentioned, uh, Antonio Correa is going to be preaching for us. I met Antonio uh, 20-something years ago in Venezuela. God reconnected us uh, several years back. We've been supporting uh, him and his church, Lego LBN in Guinari, Venezuela. And then more recently, God has called us to partner with him as he's soon leaving, probably June or July, to head out. They're going to be planning a church in Madrid, and we're just excited to be a part of that. And so if you would, put your hands together and welcome Antonio Correa to the stage. Thank you. God bless you all. It's my pleasure to be here, and uh, well, thank you for letting us be part of Cross Community. As you see, my beautiful wife sing worship, and well, I am very thankful for her life. She is the beauty part of us. <laughs> so now I came with my best part, right? So thank you, Cross Community Church, for, for being a family for us. We really feel loved by you. We feel connected with Pastor Jason, his wife, his wife, Brittany. We go together to Spain, and we've been there one week, and that was a great week. We eat a lot. You can see that. And we, we can see the culture, how Madrid is. It's a really big challenge to plan a church in one area like that. We, but we are believing that God is calling us and that to get, we are together in this. And we are going to plan a church in Madrid that will say to everybody in Madrid, okay, Jesus Christ is alive and the Bible is still the Bible. It's the Word of God, and we believe in our God. Amen? So we are together in this. Amen? Amen? Keep praying for us, please. So I want to share with you a little bit of something that we start in this year in our church in Venezuela, and I preach then about this, because these times is, are very, uh, very difficult for the church of Jesus Christ. And I am very connected with your series, Not Our Normal, because I believe that right now, the people in this world say to the good, they say it's bad. But to the bad, they say it's good, right? So we have to take care about our kids, about our new generations, about ourselves, about what the people view of the church. And uh, we need to go back of to what God says about the church. What is in the heart of God about the church? Because we are the only one, uh, the only one uh, instrument from God to share His Word, to share Jesus, and the church is, you know, the hope of the world. Amen? So it's very important how we see the church and how we live the church. I love how the Bible expressed about the church that started when Jesus ascended to the heaven. And you know, Peter came and preached, and 3,000 people came to Jesus. That was amazing. And it's wonderful, it's wonderful how the book of Acts shows us how was the primitive church and how they live, what they believe, what they was doing in that time. And it's, I think this is the heart of God for our church right now. Because as a church, we want to please our Lord. But how we can please our Lord? How is the way God thinks about the church? And, and I want to invite you to read with me in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And uh, I like, I love the church. I love this beginning of the church. They have very special things that I love. Like verse 42 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Something that I love of this church is that they always were eating something. <laughs> like, like you were in the coffee shop right now. So that we, are, we are close to them. Amen. <laughs> So everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything common. 
They sold properties and, and possessions to give to the anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple's court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. Again, they ate together. Wonderful. With glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. So I, I love this church. I mean, I, I always ask the people, how about going to one church like this? That, that is wonderful to be the church of Jesus Christ. That, that is what we are called to be. The church of Jesus Christ. The, this is the heart of God about how the church has to believe, how the church has to live. And it's very important because in this world of today, this modern world, the church, not every church lives like this. Not every church lives like the heart of God for the church. Today, in America, in Venezuela, in Spain, there is many churches that they are like crazy, right? They are doing some things. They are teaching some things. You see that? I see that. And I say, what in the world they are teaching, right? They are teaching another thing that is not what the Bible says. So we have to take care of this. And uh, I write something or I read something and I want to share with you about this same verse in Acts chapter 2 that I just read. But let's change a little bit to, to connect with the mother church. And something like this. It will be Acts 2 mother church way. They were devoted to their comfort. Happiness, personal goals, dreams, and bucket list. No one really noticed the Christians because they focus on their self. Very few of the believers were together. And when they were, they thought about stupid things. If they saw anything, they used money to buy something better for themselves. They claimed to love God, but they didn't even love each other. So they feel empty, alone, and depressed. As a result, most people dislike them, and very few lives were changing. Maybe this is a little closer to the church in the modern way. Maybe you hear before some people that does not come to church and they say, I don't want to go to the church because they are hypocrites. Hypocrites? Yeah? Many people say this to me in Venezuela. I don't like the church because they say something, but they live another way. You hear this before? So, I want to speak a little bit about this because I think it's very important that one beautiful church, like it is Cross Community Church, you, you guys can stand up and, and you know, be uh, saving what is the God's idea for the church. And I love what Pastor Jason and elders are teaching you. You are a very biblical church. I love that. But I think that I, I like to challenge the people, you know. It's like our, our church in Venezuela. We teach how to be the church of God's heart. But I have to challenge you. I have to, okay, we have to take care about what is going on in this world. Because this world is crazy. <laughs> and we need to be, be strained in God's world. Amen? Why is this important? Because what a faith community believes will shape how it lives. What we believe in our heart, you can show it in your hands, in your steps. Because you walk and you do what you believe. Okay? You move your life in the direction of your strongest beliefs. 
So what we believe is where we go. And that's for our church is the same thing. What our church believes is the way where they walk. So it's very important that we go to the Bible and we can see what is God teaching about the Bible, about the church. So how do we like cross-community church is? Like the primitive church or like the modern church? The primitive church, right? We, we want to be that. We, we need to be that. And we are in the way. So I want to challenge you to be this church and, uh, and to walk in this direction. To walk in the direction of the God's purpose for the church. Amen? You are with me in that? So the first thing I want to challenge is we will be an intensely devoted church. Okay? Intensely devoted church. Why? Because the Bible says that this primitive church, they, well, they, they were really intensely devoted. So this devoted is very important for us. It's, it's one of the words in the New Testament that is very import, important for us, devoted. Because devoted is the people that is, you know, keeping going and going one and and again and again, is somebody that have a obstinate devotion to something. It, these Christians died in the Romans uh, Coliseum for what they believe. These people face everything. There, there is one part in the Bible where the apostles were preaching, and the Romans take prison to them, fight with them, you know, almost kill these guys. And when the apostles go out again, and the Romans say, you cannot preach Jesus. And when they go out, they say, okay, Lord, give us bread to keep preaching you. I don't know if I go to jail, and they punch me, and they say, I don't preach again. I don't know what, how I will be outside again and say, Lord, give me bread to keep going, keep doing and these people were really devoted to what they believed. Are we this devoted? Are we ready to share Jesus all days of, of our lives? Are we ready to to be this kind of believers. And, and you know what, brothers and sisters? I'm preaching to you, but I'm, this is for me too. Because I believe God. I love God with all my heart. But sometimes when, when I'm facing difficult moments, or when, when I'm facing stuff that... I'm not that happy with that. I just close my mouth or close my, my heart to some share with the others. Or to, you know, when, when you are facing difficult moments and you're going to pray, you say, I don't, I don't want to pray. I don't feel so much to love to pray. We all have these days, right? Like, it's not the... I don't know. I don't know about you, but I don't. I don't go every morning like, oh, okay, shine and light. Here I am, Lord. No, I am not that way every day. I have good days, but I have some days that is tough. It's difficult. I feel sad. I'm scary. But what the Bible says, is as a Christians, we need to be devoted. And someone who is devoted to, to God, keep going. No matter what I feel, no matter what I live, no matter what is around me, I'm keep going to believe what God says I have to live. So my brothers and sisters, I'm challenging you. We will be an intensely devoted church. Somebody is with me in that? Amen? Amen? Okay. 
So let's go to the second one. We'll be, we will be an irrationally generous church. And this is like one mark from a healthy church. A healthy church is a church that is generous, that is always giving. And uh, it's beautiful the way that you are giving. I, I know that because you bless too much our, our ministry in Venezuela. And now we are connected to make ministry in Spain. And this is beautiful. I see how many people you are blessing. And that's wonderful. But, my brothers and sisters, I believe that when, you, when we say be an irrationally generous church, that's go so much more that give money. Give money, it's okay. It's, we all do it. We get, we get our offerings and tithes, good. But the heart of God for His church is way much more than just give money. We have to give our life, our service, our hands, even our tongues in some ways. When you collect some 100 people, there will be 100 different ideas. And sometimes I have to give <laughs> what I think and change a little bit to be the church of Jesus Christ. And this is very important because we have to understand the powerful that is when we have a giving heart. Because many people around you is waiting that you give something and it's not money. They are waiting for love. They are waiting for example. They are waiting for you are a friend. You are a brother. You are a sister. Many people around us are waiting for something that we can give. And maybe it's not just money. Maybe it's a Hello, how are you? Can I pray for you? When was the last time in your work that you asked the people around you, you would like that I pray for you? This goes so much more deeper because we understand and believe that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And this is in every, every situation. It's a bless to give. So how is the people around you, brothers and sisters, how is the people around you looking your life? Like someone that likes to give or someone that just likes to receive? Are you giving love? Are you giving Jesus to others? And this connect with the third one. We will be a church that shares Jesus no matter what. And this is important for the church of Jesus Christ. Because many Christians today are thinking that the only people that is responsible, responsible to preach is the pastor. To share Jesus to others. And it's not a it's not an instruction for pastors. It's an instruction for a, the whole church. We all need to share Jesus around in our life, in our, in our areas. We all need that the people around us can see Jesus in our life. Brothers and sisters, the call to, to save the world, to preach the world, is to all the community, to all cross-community church. And we are praying for this church can grow up more and more. We are believing and praying for that. I tell Jason, and we were talking a little bit, and I say, yes, I, I, we are praying for this church have a third service, another campus, and many problems for the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother. But we are believing. But... To see this here in Porto and around, it's not just one pastor or some elder's responsibility. It's our responsibility. Because my brothers and sisters, we are together in this. 
We are together and preach Jesus. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are together to preach Jesus in Venezuela. We are together to preach Jesus in, in, in Madrid. But we are together to preach Jesus here in Poro. In your city, in your work, in where you study, wherever you are, you are like a missionary that God sends to this area to preach him. Amen? So we are all missionaries. <laughs> This is important. Because we are not just spiritual consumers. We are spiritual contributors. Uh, you know what I say. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are the church. It's not this. It's not this. It's the people. And God called you like he called me and he called all of Christians to go and preach the gospel and disciple people and baptize people because they all need to know Jesus Christ. Amen? So, let's think in when was the last time that you shared Jesus outside the church. Someone Write and I, I like what they. I like to to read. Some someone write that we should preach always, but speak when it's needs. And the only way that we can always preach is with our life. But remember, our hands always are moving in the direction or of our biggest believers. So what you believe, see in your daily life. My brothers and sisters, I am calling you to be part of the biggest uh, dream of God for this world, the church. We are the church. We are the people that God calls to, re to reach Jesus in this area. And you live here, you are a missionary here to reach Jesus to many people, to bring people and that they believe in God. I pray for all of you can next Sunday bring one or two friends. You can imagine that? You can imagine if each one of us disciple two, two people every year, only two per year? You can imagine how this will affect our life, their life, how many people will be saved. You can imagine how many people not go to, the, to hell and go to the heaven. Sorry, but I love about this. About this. <laughs> Sorry, but I believe that God called us to reach the lost. And this is not only for pastors. This is for all believers. So I don't know how you're going to do next Sunday, but I hope all of you bring a new friend next Sunday. Amen? Amen. So let's preach Jesus because he's the most wonderful we can, we can to do. So we are together in this. We are together in what we are doing in Venezuela. We are together in what we got to do in Spain. We are together on what is going on here in Poro. My brothers, we are the church of Jesus Christ. And we are all together in Save the World. Amen? And uh, I want to pray with you. I would like to pray with you. I would like to pray for God give us this strength and brave to share Jesus to everybody, all the people around us. I would like to share Jesus I would like to you share Jesus in your life, in your family, and this will be wonderful. So I want to invite you, if you want to be the church of Jesus Christ, if you say, okay, Lord, I need a little bit of passion for 
preach your gospel, how about if we stand up and pray together for this? I would like to invite you to stand up and we can pray together for, for God give us this passion, this devoted. Because you know, many times in my life, I need to renew the devoted with my Lord. So if you feel that you don't have this devoted, it's okay. We all go in that way sometimes. But today is a good day to keep going. Today is a good day to say, Lord, I need you. And it's what I want to invite you to say. Please close your eyes and tell him, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you like the first Christians need you. I need that passion. I need that devoted. I need you give me that to be somebody that is irrationally generous in all ways. Somebody who shares Jesus no matter what. I don't want to be the modern version of the church. I want to be the church of Jesus Christ. Our Lord, we came to you, I pray, for my brothers and sisters here in Cross Community Church. I pray that you keep going in our life and help us to be devoted Christians who love you, who love the people around. Give us this passion to preach Jesus Christ to everybody. The Lord, Help us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Not like the normal people in these times. We want to be what is in your heart. Here we are, Lord. Here I am, Lord. We want to please you every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.